Over the past few weeks, massive floods wreaked havoc on multiple North Indian states. India's capital New Delhi struggled with flooding in mid-July. Once again, towards the last week of July as well, there was a risk of floods as the water level in the Yamuna River rose. The flooding over the past many days has also impacted large areas of northern India, including the iconic Taj Mahal, as shown in captured footage. The floods have claimed lives and caused destruction and displacement. The worst hit have been states like Himachal Pradesh, Punjab, Chandigarh, Uttarakhand, Jammu and Kashmir, Haryana, Rajasthan and Delhi. Hundreds of lives were lost during the two weeks of torrential rain and flooding and tens of thousands were displaced. The state of Himachal Pradesh was the worst affected. Over 150 people died and infrastructure worth millions has been destroyed. The chief minister of the state claimed that the floods caused the state a loss of around 98 million US dollars. The damage has mostly occurred in areas where massive amounts of construction debris have been dumped despite objections by scientists and residents. The current phase of flooding follows an intense heat wave that took the lives of over 100 people in India. The summer months of March, April, May and June are generally hot in India and an average of 45 degrees Celsius, that's 113 degree Fahrenheit, was recorded in most parts of North and East India. Heat waves have recently become the norm in summer months, intensifying before the onset of the monsoon. Now, this monsoon was marked by heavy rain and July 9th saw the most rainfall for a single day in July in more than 40 years in Delhi. The rain led to the overflowing of the Yamuna River, which subsequently submerged the city in knee-deep water and displaced tens of thousands of people. Since the beginning of this monsoon season, Delhi, Punjab and Himachal Pradesh, three states, have received 112%, 110% and 70% more rainfall than what they normally get. Heavy rains were reported in the western and southern regions of the country as well. At least 27 people died and more than 100 are missing following a landslide that buried a village in the Raigad district of Maharashtra state due to the heavy rain. Houses and vehicles were also swept away in the western state of Gujarat due to flooding caused by the rain. Now, there's a lot of debate about the reasons for these extreme climate phenomena. Scientists have said that climate change and global warming are responsible for the heat waves and as well as the intensity of the rain that takes place. But it is also very clear that our development model is the reason for why cities are flooded. This includes how cities are built, the kind of various construction activities, sewage networks that are constructed, as well as how our hills and mountain ranges are exploited. We spoke to urban affairs expert Tikender Singh Panwar, who is also the former deputy mayor of the city of Shimla, in the state of Himachal Pradesh and asked him why it is that we see so much flooding. First and foremost, uh, I, I think there was a debate in the in the parliament as well where uh, uh, where a very interesting figure was given that uh, over the period uh, we have seen uh, more flooding taking place uh, in the country and particularly in urban India. And uh, primarily because of uh, the climate change impact that we are witnessing and that is also uh, emanating from uh, from the IPCC report, which is screamingly uh, coming to us, uh, the IPCC 6 and, of course, the working groups 1, 2 and 3. And uh, they have focused their attention on two major parts of the country, that's the Himalayas and the coastal cities. And they say that Bombay is soon going to uh, get uh, severely affected. I mean, it's a matter of a few years, if not a few decades, if not years, you know, when massive uh, land mass would be submerged. Having said that, that's just one part, you know. The other part is there, we have uh, seen instances where these towns that never got flooded in, I mean, I mean, since their inception, if, if you ask me, also have uh, 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 been witness to massive flooding. And to me, I think if it's 20% climate change, 80%, it's, I wouldn't say human induced, but it's the way we have developed uh, the whole trajectory of uh, uh, urbanization of urban development in the country. And this particularly in the last three or four decades, why is it three or four decades? Because that is where the impetus comes from the center. I go back to the first urban commission, which was headed by Charles Gore. It's a fantastic commission if you go into those details. But there's one new vocabulary that gets introduced into uh, the, the the overall you know urban process. That is, treat cities as, as engines of growth. So treating cities of, as engines of growth means you have to attract invest, investment. And when you have to attract, so that's the first uh, distinction I want to make. The second one is that instead of a holistic city approach, you know, where you look at drains, where you look at infrastructure, where you look at the entire social infrastructure development process, the 
paradigm shift was more project oriented so you got a project take for example target mobility in one city solid waste ma management in another city and then likewise uh, you know water in some other city and that's how the shift started taking place jnnrm was kind of precursor and then now we it's matured into the smart cities mission and i think it's the project oriented uh, uh, approach in the cities which is primarily responsible for urban flooding because what it has done is it has completely ruined the uh, the, uh, the the drainage system of the cities now come to simla if uh, um, i mean because we have different forms of manuals the british manual is a very interesting manual and actually the british manual tells us how the drains must be constructed in a mountain town for example but under the smart city you find all these drains have either been encroached upon or have been like uh, you know uh, uh, i mean you find a real estate development taking place in certain areas which were supposed to be no construction zone and just imagine a few weeks ago when we came from u20 i mean you know this whole ulabalu Uh, that is being uh, made about the G20 thing. So we had this urban 20 happening in Ahmedabad, okay? And Ahmedabad was a showcase to the entire U20 nations that look, this is how the prime minister envisioned our urban uh, urban stuff in the country, and you know, which uh, uh, eventually led to the formation of uh, uh, our smart cities mission and Swachh Bharat mission, and then Amrut and all that stuff. And uh, just yesterday we saw that the entire airport. not just the city but but the airport was flooded people were saying uh, i mean i mean they were ridiculing us saying that i mean it's a shame for, uh, shame for us as well that is it an airport or is it a port you know where you can just land ships into a town so uh, i think uh, yes climate change is important but at the same time it's more human induced I mean, it's the is the so called development uh, induced strategy which has actually uh, destroyed the uh, the convent the not just the conventional wisdom but also the wisdom that you require in um, in 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 constructing or you know in in creating these cities and just for this uh, engines of growth vocabulary or uh, this new paradigm that you require investments so the investment is the primary mode whether the investment is taking place in a river bank or the investment is taking place uh, in some of the urban commons you know the uh, uh, the lakes and the water bodies for your real estate development doesn't matter much and that's how the nature answers back and it has i think answered back and come to himalayas i mean we, we discussed that earlier the way uh, the colossal loss that we have uh, witnessed and still continuing i mean we have lost our roads we have lost houses we have lost lives and uh, uh, we find no end to it